Andy Stevenson for Severe MMA standing alongside the most talked about featherweight, sorry, lightweight outside of the UFC right now, Paul Hughes, who has just pulled off a spectacular first round uh, KO over Jan K. Hagens here in the main event of Cage Warriors 161. Paul, it's, uh, it's great to see you back. It's great to be speaking with you again. Could you have envisioned this going so perfectly from the walkout, the lead up, uh, the fight itself and the finish, and of course yeah. the celebration of the cage? I could envision that because I did. Wait. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one extra sweet? They're all sweet, brother. A fight, fighting's the most beautiful game. You know, it's the most emotional game where everything's on the line, so any win is sweet. You know, coming in, you, you had great success early on with the calf kicks. You seemed to almost wobble Kay Hagen's early on in the fight, I thought, um, but then ultimately it was, it was the left hook. I was in the horse show house just about two hours ago or three hours ago with your fans. Yeah, um, and one of them pre predicted this. They predicted, he said, left hook, left yeah. hook KO, and you pulled it off. There we are, there we are. <laughs> Who is that? They must be friggin', they must be good, whoever that is. They've already messaged us. Um, <laughs> Also, uh, what I notice is there's so many fans coming from far and wide. I met people who were, I think, on J1 with you in San Francisco or somewhere yeah, yeah. like this. Oh, I've, I've people always coming in from around the world here. You got Dave, my manager over here, flew in from New York. I've got friends from West Coast America coming in, and they're always coming in because you can't miss a Paul Hughes fight now. You know, look at the spectacles that I'm putting on now. So, I mean, of course you're gonna fly in. <laughs> what does it mean to you to have that support? Like they, they seem to truly care about you. Uh, that's the beauty of it. I've got something different with, with my people and my followers because I'm at the point now where it's kind of interesting. I'm very, I'm very fortunate that my career didn't just go boom at the very start because I turned pro 19, had the injuries, all that stuff. So now, now I've grown into a man and I'm still not like a famous blah, 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 like this egomaniac. So like now I'm an adult and I've had these people with me all the way and it's slowly but surely risen. It hasn't just been a, like an overnight sensation bang in the UFC, I'm a superstar making blah, 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 I don't care, but you know, it's been like a slow burn. And I think that's why I have such a special connection with my followers because a lot of them are friends, obviously, and family and stuff as well. But I think that we just, yeah, it's just sick, it's sick. Yeah. You've always been a proponent of stoicism. Do you feel like it Absolutely. was it was the injuries earlier on, the handbrakes? Is that where you, oh, yeah. where that came in? Absolutely, I had no other choice. You know, if I was gonna do this and make it, I had to find something. I had to find something to guide me, something to get me through all this. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a lone wolf, you know, and I had to just go out on the hunt and find something to get me there and something to, guide my path and that was definitely a help for sure um, and I think it's the it's the best thing that ever happened to me was that early injury layoff in, in, at the start of my career because it just formed me into the person that I needed to become to be the man standing right here in front of you right now as a 26 year old that's had so much experience in the game now a slow burn as well I just feel like I'm ready for anything and I've been through everything now and I'm just ready for to take over, you know, I'm ready to be the UFC world champion. Like I'm, I've, I'm that person now, you know, like I feel like that person now. So that's how I know it's gonna happen. Where do we stand with the Cage Warriors featherweight belt? Are you still a champion? No, I don't think so. I don't think so, I don't care. Is l lightweight, is that the plan from there? You said before yeah. lightweight, is lightweight the plan moving I'm forward? i lightweight, yeah. McGregor famously fought a featherweight, went up to, to lightweight, won the belt in Cage Warriors, but then the UFC contract came and he went back down to featherweight. Mm. Could you see yourself following a similar route, or are you dead set no matter oh, what? No, I'm, I'm dead set on, feather, on lightweight. Why? Activity, longevity, yeah. Do you feel like uh, you, you want to, having, well, you're, you're not even that, you haven't been off that long. Like, I, I feel like we've been talking about you so much that like, it seems like you've been off for an extended period of time, but you really haven't. Yeah. But is, is activity, in, is that at the oh, forefront of your mind right now? That's been one of the things that's just been more frustrating with my career and how it's went. People were saying, oh, he's not signed because he's not fighting anybody. But, like, I'm ready to fight now. You know, I'm ready to go now. Obviously, when you're champion, that's a whole different thing because you've got then I had the whole Vucenic. I had the interim belt with Chapa, then pullouts and all that crack. Then I had the title thing with Vucenic, you know. It's not as easy as just going, here, I want to fight next month. Mm. Or I want to fight in two months' time. So, well, it's not as easy as that when you're the champion and you're building these huge events and you're selling out arenas and you're doing these special things. So it's not quite that easy, but 
yeah, I'm, I'm ready for activity now. One of the main talking points from, you know, people in the know have been calling for you to be in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of aware of the level of opponent that you've been facing in Buchanan and Charrier. But the naysayers will say he hasn't been fighting enough and he hasn't got the finishes. To go out there and put away a guy like that as spectacularly as in the first round as he did, does that, is that like, do you have a chip on your shoulder about anything like that? Or like, is, does that, is that extra sweet? Yeah, no, like I definitely have a wee bit of a chip in the shoulder from, from this year, but that's, you gotta turn the obstacle into advantage and that's just how I do it, you know? Um, people always talk, they always talk and that's fine. That's fine, but yeah. Did Cage Warriors miss a trick by not having this for a belt? 100%. You know, I don't want to get too much into it, but of course it did. The way I see it is it didn't cost anybody anything to put that on as an interim belt tonight. You know, obviously I would like to fight Hardwick, but he's a bitch. Um, interim belt wouldn't have cost anybody anything. But it is what it is. You know, I wanted to get a fight. I got a fight. I put him out in the first round. And all that matters to me is the UFC. You know, if that wasn't in the near future, then I'd be like, oh my God, that should be for a belt. Da, 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 da. I should have two belts on my shoulders right now. But I'm looking, looking far ahead, you know. Your manager, David Fish, is standing just off camera here. He, he, your work was tonight. His work is going to be, be ramped up the next few weeks here now. Yeah, um, he does. That's what we do. What are your expectations with regards to the UFC? Uh, to, just, to sign him? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't have an expectation. I don't have an attachment to an, to an outcome right now because, of course, after the last fight, you would have thought I was the most certain person in the world to sign to the UFC. So I have no attachment to that outcome. I'm not going to start saying oh, I want to fight so-and-so next because I just want to see what they're saying and then I'll just take it from there, you know? Not that I'm, like, obviously you need to take time after a fight, you're high on adrenaline, but, like, I'm sweet, I'm chilling now, but even at that, I still want to wait and see and then I'll take it from there. Where do we stand with George Hardwick right now? I don't care. He missed his opportunity. It was an opportunity for Red Panty Night for him tonight, but he missed it, so I don't care. I don't, I, to be honest, I actually just don't even care. Not at the dig at him, I actually like George and his brother. Like, I think they know that. But the UFC is all I care about, you know, and that's fine. What's your message to the matchmakers in the UFC? I'm the best. That's it. I'm the best. I'm the best in the world. And I'm a superstar. And I've been a superstar. So we'll see what happens. Andy Stevenson with Paul Hughes, the Cage Warriors Featherweight Champion still. And uh, appreciate the time. Thanks for this. is actually the second time we've done this. So I appreciate the time. <laughs> Thanks very much.